Hi everyone, Mrs. Dominic here. Uh, we are going to be continuing on with our use of basic forms that we started with last week. Uh, our four forms that we talked about were the cylinder. The cylinder, we drew it by making that skinny oval at the top, two straight sides, and then a sort of small, shallow curved line at the bottom. We also talked about the cube or the box. I gave you multiple ways to draw a cube or box. The first one was to draw a corner, that seam where two faces of that box meet. From there, I instructed you to draw diagonally up from the tops in either direction and at a similar angle from the bottom drawing up. On the right, and on the left, vertical lines connecting the top line to the bottom line. And then parallel lines to create the top of your box. You can also try making a front facing box if you just draw your typical square or rectangle. And then putting a trapezoid on top of it by making two Diagonal lines coming towards each other and another horizontal line. It was brought to my attention that there is a third way to draw a cube or box. If you start by drawing a square, and at each of three corners, making diagonal lines that are mostly parallel or as parallel as you can make them, and then drawing uh, horizontal lines and a vertical line to connect. That way you can have a box that is more or less facing you. It changes the view of the box, but all of those work. Another shape we talked about was the cone. Cone was fairly easy. You started with two diagonal lines. Whether you made a really skinny cone or a wide cone, that was your choice and then drawing that curved line to connect on the bottom. That one, everyone was successful with. I was very proud. And our last one is a hemisphere or a dome. <laughs> to draw this hemisphere or dome, I like to start with the base of that dome, which is a curved line, your smile type line and then to put on the top of it half of a circle. <laughs> Corrections. This week we're going to be moving on to how to put these things together. I really feel that that's where most of you struggled was how do I take the cylinder, the cube, the dome, and the cone to make a building? Some of you just gave me um, uh, piles of objects. Some of you made one big cube and said, here's my factory and randomly put stuff in it. Uh, but I had very few people actually make me something that looked like a building. So this week, we're going to be working on that again, and we're gonna be using those same shapes, the cylinder, the cube, the dome, and the cone to make a castle. If you have already looked at uh, the other two websites that I left for you, the other information I left for you to uh, do some research, you are probably going to recognize this image of a castle. It is the medieval style castle that your first web page went over. So you should recognize a lot of these areas. You should recognize the moat. You should recognize that there is a drawbridge that brings you know people in and out of the castle. You should also be able to see all of the walls around that castle with their towers. But all of these pieces of the castle are basically just made out of those same simple shapes that we had before. 
each one of the tall towers is more or less just a cylinder with straight sides, round top, and round bottom. Most of the main parts of the building are a cube or a box. You can clearly see the corners, the edges, and the top with those four flat sides. A lot of the towers in this particular castle are covered with a cone. So they have the two diagonal sides and that curved bottom. The only thing you don't really see in this picture is a dome, but it would be very easy to imagine one on the top of one of these towers. This castle is a diagram. It was drawn by someone, either on a computer or by hand. But these castles do, they do exist in real life all over the world. Here's an example of a castle um, in Kilkenny in Ireland. And it has all of those same features. It's got the cylinder towers. It's got the square sides in between them. It's got those castellated edges that people think of when they think of a medieval castle. Those ones where it zigzags up and down. If that's not your typical castle that you think of, you may be imagining this type of castle. This is Cinderella's castle from Disney World. And this castle is covered with cones. Covered! There are so many of them on the tops of all of these cylindrical towers. Lots of the areas inside the outermost castle wall are just made of boxes. You can see them sticking out. Disney castles, fairy tale castles, are typically inspired by real life ones. For example, this one in Germany was the inspiration for the Disney castle. It has those same sort of blue roofs that have the cones on them. It's got the tall white or gray towers. It has one main entrance that you come in through. It's got all of the cubes for the other large areas of the building. It's all there in this castle. This one happens to be from Germany, but there are others. This one also. It's got some of the same features as the medieval castle with the cone on the top, the cubes for the building, the cylinders for the tower, one main road in, one main road out, and it also has layers and walls. Not every castle can be a cheery fairy tale type castle. This castle <laughs> is Dracula's castle. It is the one that influenced uh, Bram Stoker's novel, Dracula. You can take tours of this castle. Many believe it to be haunted, but it is still just a castle covered in domes and made of cylinders and of cubes and of cones. But most of those castles I've shown you so far are European. This castle is clearly of a different style. This castle is in Japan. It is an Asian style castle, but it is still big. It is still grand. Most of it is made of cubes. You can see the corners on the cube and the straight sides. It is a raised up castle like most of them. It's got lots of stone below it. If I'm not mistaken, there is a river down below. But again, still just made up of those same shapes, even though it has a completely different style. This castle in Portugal, the Pena National Palace, I really like this castle because it seems like it's a big conglomerate of a bunch of buildings. You can kind of tell a lot of different people have lived here. It looks like it started out as one kind of building and then somebody else inherited it 
and decided to make a new edition in a different, slightly different style. And so on and so on throughout history until now you have this big mishmash of buildings and styles. This particular building though does a really great job of showing you how you can use all of these shapes. Take like the portion of the building that looks the shortest, that's closest to us. That section of the building has two very dominant towers to them that are seriously just two basic cylinders. There's one here in the front and then there's one towards the back. The next section of the building are just two large rectangles or two large cubes. They go across the front with a bunch of windows and then they also go back and connect the two towers. The main door of this palace is to the right. And that section is probably just one big cube tower as well. The next addition back, the one that's bright yellow, this one is a couple of cylinders put together. One that is incredibly large. And the other one is a little bit taller and a little bit skinnier. The larger of the two cylinder towers has that beautiful dome on top. As you go around this building, you can see all those basic shapes over and over and over again. You've got the cubes for the larger square towers. You've got the cylinders for the taller roundish type towers, and then you've got those domes. We really don't see any cones until we get to the very top of that large red clock tower. But they're there. This building is kind of a mishmash. And when you go to create your building, I really would like you to think about it this way. When you go to make your castle, these are the things I want you to think about. First off, no copying. The goal of this project is not for you to draw exactly what Mrs. Dominic drew. You are trying to figure out what sort of combination of these four forms you can put together. Not what I can do, but what you can do. You need to include, number two, you need to include all four of these form shapes in your final image. When I look at this and when I grade it, I'm going to be double checking to make sure that you have cylinders, that you have cubes, that you have hemispheres or domes, and that you have cones. You need at least one of each. And if you are drawing some sort of interesting castle, it'll be really easy for you to include them all. Number three, you need to include some detail in your castle. So don't just draw me a cylinder and say, oh, here's a tower. You need to draw me a cylinder and make sure that I know that there's windows on it. Maybe you're going to put some stone texture on it. Maybe you're gonna go ahead and castellate the top. You know, put that zigzag classic topper of a castle on there. However you choose to do it is fine, but I wanna be able to know that like, oh, this is a building. There's windows, there's doors, there's some sort of texture to it. And then number four, if you have any extra space on your picture, you need to put your castle somewhere. That means there's a horizon line involved. Maybe there's some trees. Maybe if you can see the land around your castle, there's a moat. But finish off the picture. Don't just give me any old thing. If you are able to color it, I would highly appreciate it. But coloring is optional. I'm looking for what you can come up with as a drawing. And the more you add, the better it's going to look. 
Okay, so today for our castle, I'm going to be just drawing here on um, a sketchbook page. All you're going to need to do this project successfully is a pencil and an eraser. If you also have some sort of trusty ruler, that I think a lot of you will find useful, especially trying to connect things, make things straight, certain height. I know how a lot of you can be particular. Um, for me, just for guidelines sake, I'm going to tell myself that I want my castle to essentially fill half the page. So I like to kind of give myself limits. I'm not going to draw any lower than that with my castle. I'm going to hopefully not go off the top of the page with my castle. And I don't want it to become any wider because I want to give my castle a little bit of scenery off to the left. I'm going to start by sticking to those medieval castle walls, uh, making some cylinders for towers, connect them up, make a big archway to enter into my castle. And then I'm going to go ahead and make some buildings behind that wall to fill in the rest of my castle. Okay, here we go.
everybody. That's about all I've got for today. Um, I tried to show you as many textures for uh, the outsides of buildings um, and roofs as I could come up with, but try and figure out what you can come up with all on your own. Um, don't forget, you need to make sure that you have cones, cylinders, cubes, and domes all in your drawing in order to get full credit. Um, if you're going to include your moat, you know, make sure I can tell that that's what it is. And, you know, any, any bit of creativity you want to add, go right ahead. Feel like you need a dragon? Put it in there. Spaceship landing? Why not? Just make sure that I can recognize your castle when you're done and that you are following the four requirements, okay? If you're not sure what those are, rewind the video until you get to that screen where they're written out for you. Good luck. I can't wait to see what you all can come up with. Um, and keep trying. Miss Dominic out.